Hello and welcome to episode number 9 of Confessions of a Virtual Boss. As always, your host and virtual boss, Michael Brody. And today's show is going to be about outsourcing. The good, the bad, and the honest truth. I'm going to remove layers off the top and I'm going to dive into this topic and explain both sides of the coin. I'm going to give you my opinions on the matter Then ultimately, I'm going to leave you with all the valuable info you need to make to make the choice yourself using rationality. I always say, you know, get the common sense, get the facts and get everything out there and, you know, make the choice yourself. So outsourcing has become such a polarizing issue that it's become difficult to talk about in any kind of rational manner. It divides opinion like Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton in the recent election in America. I know a lot of people who can't say enough good things about outsourcing. I happen to be one of them. You probably guess that. It's helped me grow my business. It's given my life back. And I know a lot of people who've been affected negatively by outsourcing. And I think of it as an instrument for, well, they think of it as an instrument for evil. Something created by the devil himself. But outsourcing, like any instrument or any tool... It can be used for good, or it can be used for bad. It affects different people in different ways. All of us have been affected by outsourcing, and in some way or another, it's changed the way we live our lives, both directly and indirectly. And the best way to approach outsourcing is to look at it objectively. Weigh the benefits against the costs before making any judgment. I always, I, you know, I would always advise you to do that on anything, but. Outsourcing in particular, because of the you know the polarized opinion it gives, weigh the facts up and look at it objectively. Okay, so let's start with what the 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 bad part of outsourcing. The bad part. <laughs> okay, so outsourcing has contributed to some manufacturing jobs being moved offshore. It's had an effect on communities, and certain places have felt the direct impact of outsourcing. We all know that, you know, when we're not blind, we know, you know, we're, we're smart people. We're in business for a reason. However, outsourcing is not new. And in fact, outsourcing really only came into play in the level it has in the manufacturing and the consumer sectors for the last 30 years. Really because of the, the consumerism acceleration in the West, in America and Britain, and more and more people suddenly had disposable income. I mean, certainly from the 50s onwards, suddenly the average person had disposable income. In Britain, the 50s, 60s, it was a new wave, a new era. And these people who had the disposable income, they began wanting to pay less for the same quality goods. They wanted more for the money. They wanted more goods. They wanted, you know, the latest electronics. And that was really, um, you know, what accelerated offshoring in terms of manufacturing big big contributing factor the goods couldn't be made cheap enough onshore to support what you know what many people deem living wage i mean we're talking above minimum wage but even at minimum wage the goods probably can't be produced with all the layers of bureaucracy and everything else probably can't be produced to the level to be able to afford to sell them at the price they're being sold at people that can't always afford the premium price okay so that's the bad side the good part let's weigh the scales up a little here no question about it. I mean, even the most anti-outsourcing people in the world can't deny the fact that it reduces costs and it can increase profits. I've worked as most you know, as a lot of you know who who know me personally, or if you you know you've met me um, over the over the last few years, I've met a lot of people. I've worked with some big companies as a consultant to help them reduce staffing costs by offshoring. However, my main audience, my main, you know, my main listener, my main subscriber, my main whatever your friend, whatever you want to call the word, my main audience is not the MD or operation director of a 250 plus employee company. They're in fact startups, new entrepreneurs, small businesses, and people really who are, who are committing to do everything to make the business dream become successful. They want to realize the vision. If you're an entrepreneur, okay, let's just okay, let's let's just think about this. Rather than me just talking, let's put a scenario out there. 
If you're an entrepreneur, you just start now. The difference between $2,000 a month for an assistant in America, and that's if you could get somebody for that. I mean, you, for two grand a month, you're not really going to get the top of the, you know, you're not going to get somebody super good. We all know that. You're going to pay a lot more. But let's just, for this example, so you're an entrepreneur, you're just starting out. The difference between paying $2,000 for an assistant in America and $500 a month for a Filipino virtual assistant is not a small amount. It's a lot of geld. It's a lot of money. In fact, it may not even be possible for some businesses and some entrepreneurs because they don't have the extra $2,000 a month. Plus, on top of that, the space of all the additional costs, the, the extra office supplies, the furniture, the added electricity, the, the benefits, the tax, everything else added and factored in, the red tape, needed to hire the assistant back home. That's an extra, you know, $1,500. That extra $1,500 could spell the difference between, I don't know, bankruptcy or maybe stopping you taking the business to the next level. Also, let's think of it this way, okay? If you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, and you and your competitor both have a two grand budget, so you both got 2K, you got about 2,000 bucks, okay? You hire one local average employee back home because 2017, as I said before, it's not going to get you a superstar. It's not. Your competitor, on the other hand, he decides to hire three remote employees in the Philippines at $500 each. One is a general VA, a general virtual assistant, who does the admin, the customer service. One is a digital marketer with PPC knowledge. And one is a content writer who's doing the social media and all the you know blogs, articles, making sure that you know that's getting done. And bingo, you've still got, or he's still got your competitor, $500 a month left over. So what could he do? He could invest that in uh, marketing efforts such as AdWords or, or Bing or Facebook ads. Who do you think wins the battle? Honestly, who do you think wins that? So you've got the one guy, he's got the three experts, and he's got the 500 going into the ads. I mean, you, you know, honestly, I mean, we've, I say this over and over again, we've really got to look at this objective, you know, with an objective in mind and look at what's best for business, what's going to be best for, for you know, for the bottom line, what's going to be best for driving things home, making the business grow. The honest truth. So we've had the good, we've had the bad. I feel like a Clint Eastwood movie, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, the honest truth. That's just, okay. So the honest truth, businesses need to grow to survive. And that means, you know, that means cutting the crap. It means cutting costs wherever you can. I, I told you this story on a previous podcast. When I had the nightclub back when I was 20, I had a nightclub for a little while. Um, and... The first, one of the first things I did, and I think the second day of taking over the business, was I renegotiated with the window cleaner and I renegotiated with the bar, uh, the, the, the doorman company who were taking care of the security. And it mightn't seem a lot. I saved like two, three, equivalent, like three dollars an hour on the doorman. I saved about 30 bucks a month on the window cleaning by renegotiating. But on a year that was like seven, eight grand, I think it was seven or eight thousand quid, so that's like ten, eleven thousand dollars I saved, and that was just from cutting a few unnecessary costs, renegotiating. So, we all know businesses need to grow to survive, and that means cutting costs wherever they can, without compromising quality, may I add. Outsourcing provides all businesses with a quality workforce at an affordable price, so they can continue to grow and be profitable. Outsourcing done right is the great equalizer for the small business and entrepreneur with big dreams. Somebody who really wants to make some money and they want to, you know, they have a goal, they want to create a business, they, they know what they want out of life. And at the end of the day, if you don't get an advantage, then your competitor will. And if they don't already have right now, trust me, trust me, trust me, they will find that advantage and one person will lose and one person will win. And it could eventually mean the doors closing the business 
instead. Think big. Think, how can you adapt and win using the resources and using the tools and have, you know, you have such as outsourcing. Maybe you've had a bad experience because it was done wrong. In that case, go to my site, www.michaelbrody.net, join my community for free, and I'll help you in any way I can. Or tweet me, at the virtual boss. Any questions you have, any, you know, obstacles, problems, anything, just, you know, feel free. I really, I can't say this enough, I love what I do. I, I love this, I enjoy it. I love doing the show, I love the videos, I love the whole thing. I love, you know, the business, the virtual staff .ph. I love it all. So really, you wouldn't be inconvenienced me doing that. I, I'd appreciate it and it would be fun to be able to help you there. Okay, so back to the bad points of outsourcing. One thing I'll say here is one bad point is prejudices. Okay, one thing I don't like about outsourcing is how some small-minded people have this stereotype of an entire nation. People who've perhaps done it wrong or had a bad experience. Maybe they were bad because they were, I don't know, shit entrepreneurs. They weren't very good at it. And everybody's a good entrepreneur. And they say things like, I've heard this, you know, and it, it, it really annoys me, really, because it's very small-minded. They say things like, Indians are stupid. Well, no, I don't think so. I mean, Lakshmi Mittal seems to be pretty smart, <laughs> you know. At least he was richest man in the UK for a lot of years. Philippines is full of lazy people. Um, not based on my experience, it's not. And all this crap. No dummy. The reason is probably because of you. Have you never been to a local store back in your home country, your home city, your hometown, and had a bad experience? Guess what? That does not mean the whole nation is stereotyped. The truth? Good workers and bad workers exist everywhere. I've had some, I, honestly, I've had some fantastic staff. I'm talking, I'm having some gems. I've been blessed and most of my business is a retail company. I had some great, great, great guys. And I've got some awesome people here in the Philippines right now. However, when I had the nightclub in the UK, I inherited one or two, like, super bad staff. I'm talking like, oh. we had a guy in. And he was the assistant. He was the manager. We Because we had an operations guy and we had the manager. And I remember this was like the, the first weekend I was there when we took it over. The guy was, you know, seemed pretty good. He had the knowledge. And anyway, we had we had six guys on the bar and we had the manager in. And it was a really quiet night. Can't remember why, but it was a quiet night anyway. So the take was down. Bar wasn't really busy. Two of the staff were basically just sitting there doing nothing. And you know what the manager, well, I came in anyway. Came in, it was like 1 a.m. Bar should have 3, 3 a.m. And we... Uh, I went upstairs to go into my office and, you know, to check everything and check the cameras and all bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. And he, he was standing up a pair of ladders on the upper floor, which was closed that particular night, and he was painting. I said, uh, I remember, I, I looked, I imagined me, okay, I was a good crombie on the other coat, and I said, David, I said, what are you doing? He said, oh, it's quiet, I thought I'd give it a, a one silver with a paintbrush. <laughs> I said, if it's quiet, send somebody home. Why have we got six staff in? I said, well, what was it like the same weekend, the same night last year? He said, I don't know. I said, well, w w wouldn't it make sense to have kept the records? You could look back and you could, maybe it's a regular occurrence. I don't know, but put the paintbrush down. <laughs> put it down right now, Okay. And I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not some kind of dictator or boss. I'm actually a good boss. I'm fair, I, I don't bother my team. I set tasks. I set things to do. I set the direction for the business. But I, I'm not a micromanager. I really aren't. I trust people and I like to empower people. It's my management style. But this was just, it was alien for me. I mean, it's, it really was. And anyway, that, that got sorted. <laughs> trust me, it got sorted. But... What I hope you guys would take away from this show today, I know I transgressed a little bit before about the story with the bar and all that, but what I do hope you take away is outsourcing in general is good. And the negative effects of outsourcing often emerge 
when outsourcing isn't used in an honest and ethical manner. That's when, they, you know, when people try and, some people, they do, you sometimes do, people try and screw, they don't want to pay the salary, they they want commission only, they all this type of thing. That's usually when it goes bad. And remember, the news always shows you the bad stuff, never shows you the good stuff. But you can build a profitable, ethical business and outsource overseas. You can achieve everything you want in business, you can grow the business, and you can get freedom in your life by using outsourcing properly. Remember, check out our other episodes. We talk about all this in greater detail. We really dive into what the difference between what people think outsourcing is and what hiring full-time virtual employees is. Totally different ball game. Really totally different. But I've got a video on it, actually. If you go on my site, www.michaelbrody.net, click videos. It's free, by the way. All the videos are on free. And I've got a video on there. It, it really it tells you why I predominantly only hire full-time virtual employees. I don't really outsource, and I don't really hire anybody part-time, only full-time. So watch that video. I think you'll probably find it really helpful if you, like, you know, enjoyed this show, this podcast. Thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate it, um, or listening, should I say. Take care, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks. See you next time.